Today's Clean My Mix is a song all the way from sunny Scotland. This is a song by a guy named Scott Stevenson. Scott, thank you so much for sending in the song. I really appreciate it. In this Clean My Mix, I am going to attempt to make my own mix of this song by the end of the video, which we will then compare to his mix. I'm also going to be looking at some of the things that I think uh, we're, we're done. You know, the recordings are nice, but there's certainly room for improvement on some of the stuff. So we're going to talk about that first. So let's get right to it. Clean my mix number two. The very first thing that I noticed when I opened up this project was the very small recorded signal size that I could just see right here in the main window of GarageBand. Across the board, vocals, guitars, everything is pretty lowly recorded. Okay, so Scott, let's talk about this first, okay? So down here, if we come to the editor window, what you should understand is that these numbers on the left side of the window are percentages. So what you have recorded here occupies about, uh, I mean, I might be being a little generous by saying 10%, it might be closer to 8%, but you want anywhere between 25 to 50 and really nothing peaking out above 50% here, okay? so. That is going to be something that we may have to combat as we go through and try to mix this song, but I just wanted to point this out. So why don't we take a quick listen to this song just so you can hear what we're dealing with. I really like the song and I do like the mix that he came up with and uh, just so you know, his mastering is running right now. So here it is. There you go. Super fun song. Totally like uh, reminds me of uh, like Gomez or uh, Ambulance LTD bands like that. So I love this style of music. So anyway, let's get right into it. OK, so let's talk about the drums, because I think that is a good place to start. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go in and look at the effects that you're running. Uh, OK, so you have a lot of effects running on this drum kit. I don't know exactly what drum kit you're using, and I do believe there's a track down here. Uh, yeah, there is. So let's put that up top just so we have them all together. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is address this uh, kick and snare here. Okay, so it sounds to me like you got a lot going on. Uh, the Q there is doing a bunch. You have a little bit of distortion on there using a pitch shifter, which is odd because it's not doing any semitones and you have it 20% into the mix and you're using a reverb uh, and the dry is set to 90 and I feel like it might be hurting more than it's helping. So this is obviously just going to be my preference on a song like this but um, I'm just going to turn these off for now uh, and let's listen to them. Yeah I, I, I mean I think already they're better. <laughs> Yeah, with all these off, it, the drums are just better. You can hear the drums, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna leave that off for right now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, negative five on this drum. And I'm gonna do the same on everything else right now. We're just gonna set this all to negative five. If you watched my mixing with headroom video, you will know why. I will make sure there's a link or just, you know, remember mixing with headroom. If you can search that on the channel page, you'll find it. Okay, so. Uh, let's also take a look. Let's make our own EQ here. Okay, so let's bring just a tiny bit of this out at 50. 
uh, yeah, 50 on the dot. And let's just bring a little bit back in here. Okay. So we got this snare. We want to hear just a touch more. Just to brighten it up a little bit, okay? So that's that. Uh, let's go to the symbols. I assume, yep, all the same stuff is on. Let's go back. Let's make an EQ here. So this is a hi-hat, uh, which is being played very quietly. Oh, there seems to be some automation on here. So let's turn that off. Okay. So let's take a look at the CQ for this hi-hat. Let's bring just a little bit of high end in just so we can get uh, a little bit more out of that symbol. And we will most likely be going in and addressing some of the velocities uh, of these MIDI notes. Okay, that seems good. Uh, all right, so we got a negative five this again. And let's hear, what's this, a tambourine. Okay, now something that's interesting in here, I will show you. If we take the editor window on, this is the tambourine track, okay? So I just wanted to let you guys know, the velocity can be equally as powerful sometimes as a volume change. So in this case, where all these little hits are, yeah, the velocity is 60. So it's gonna be kind of hard to hear this even in you know the best case scenario. So I'm just gonna turn this up on velocity. You can hear how much louder that is. It was down, it was here before, more or less, and then up here. Okay, so we're starting to hear that a little bit, and let's just turn it up as here as well. Okay, so now we got the drum sort of squared away to a point where I can start working, I think. So let's look for the bass track, that's down here. Okay, we're gonna pull that up to the top and we're gonna organize our rhythm section a little bit. Okay, so it's not bad, but it is quite devoid of uh, bass frequency. So let's look, take a look at your EQ. Yeah, okay. So you are pulling all the low end. I mean, the, the high pass filter is up to 100, so yeah. Okay, so again, this is gonna be personal preference stuff, and I'm just gonna open up a uh, preset here. So we're gonna go to clean bass, and we're just gonna choose pick brightener, because uh, I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, good, okay, so let's see. Okay, and you had a distortion going, so let's uh, do that, pedals here. Amp designer pedal board there. And you were using you were using this distortion. Now I know I didn't show you guys this, but I did look at this project earlier. Um, you're using this one. The fuzz ones I tend to like a little bit better for bass. Because they still allow a lot of low end to pass through them. So you just get a little bit of grind, and especially on a song like this, I think it's gonna be a little bit more appropriate. So let's uh, let's mute everything else, okay? Uh, make sure everything down here is muted, okay? All right, let's listen to this in mixing. Okay, so basically I'm just making sure that the kick and the bass are basically the same. I might want to turn that up a touch. Okay, yeah, let's go into the bass amp and see. Oh yeah, all right, so this is down to negative 11. Considering the signal that you have recorded, I'm gonna turn this up to, let's say negative three. just to get a little more gain out of that distortion pedal. All right, so there's this, there's the, uh, what's it called? The bass, all right. Let's look at the acoustic guitar, I believe, is this. 
Uh, by the way, I did want to say your acoustic guitar sounds nice. I wish that it was recorded a little bit more loudly, but uh, we're going to fix that now. So the only thing you got running is the channel EQ. Um, okay, so let's do something here. Let's go preset again, and let's see what we find under acoustic guitars. Let's just say uh, natural strum. Let's listen to this. Let's try natural flat pick. Okay, I, I can live with natural strum on this one because we do have two acoustic guitars to deal with here. So uh, let's just bring a little compression in. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna turn that up. And now one thing you might be noticing if you've watched my videos in the past, I am gonna let this compressor do a little bit of work for uh, increasing the gain. Uh, I don't think I need to bring it up hmm, with a gain plugin, uh, but I could, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna leave it like this and see what we'd get. Let's go in and take a quick look at this EQ. Okay, I like that on that. All right, so let's take a look at this other guitar part. Uh, okay, it looks like you have the same thing going on. And the CQ is, yeah, see this CQ is a little bit dark for my personal taste on an acoustic guitar. You really, I mean me personally, and I do recommend this, you wanna be able to hear the pick, you know? You wanna hear that strummy stuff, almost like a maraca. I've said that so many times on my channel. Um, so let's go back into the presets and let's make this one natural strum. Uh, no, we'll make this one natural flat pick, actually. Just so we have a slightly different flavor coming out of each speaker. Um, Okay, so in this case where I'm, man, I have to hit that super hard. Let's open the gain compressor, the gain compressor. Let's open the gain plugin and let's just bring this up like 3 dB. Let's just push a little harder on this compressor. Yeah. I can live with that. Now it does sound like I'm getting a little bit of honk out of the 200 and I'm just gonna bring that down little bit there and I'm gonna bring up the high end just a touch so we hear that maraca <laughs> of the pick hitting the strings okay I'm gonna say we're good on that now I'm trying to do this very quickly you guys um, I do not want this video to take up an hour I've actually shot this like two or three times and uh, it took an hour so I'm going to be quick and I also know what I've done in the past so here we go let's listen to this Okay, so you should hear that now. There are two different sounds on the acoustic guitar coming out of the left and the right, uh, and I do have them panned hard left and right as well. Okay, what's this guy? This is an electric guitar, I believe. Yep. Okay, so hmm. let's do the gain plug-in again, and let's just stick with this plus 3 dB thing, and we will do that here, and let's just take a listen. Where are we? Here we are. Turn up the compressor a little bit. Wow. I could probably push a little harder on this gain, so let's do that, another dB, so we're up to four dB now. There we go. Look at your EQ on this. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to make that sound. Like, wait, what? why do I see this same exact EQ that I saw on the acoustic guitar, I think, wasn't it? Um, yeah, you are sort of hurting your tone here. So let's go up to guitars and let's just say, uh, where is it? There's like a electric guitar setting. Isn't there an electric guitar setting in here, you guys? 
Shouldn't I already know this? Clean up guitar, electric funk guitar, guitar sweetener. Um, let's say picked electric guitar. Mm -hmm. Now me personally, I do want to hear a little of this low end coming out of this guitar. Okay, so I like that. All right, so that's this one. I'm going to, because there is another electric guitar part right down below it, uh, which is also for some reason the thing that he chose to make the groove track for everything else to follow. Not exactly sure about that thought process, like what, what the idea was there, um, but whatever, it sounds pretty good. So let's just duplicate this track and I'm gonna grab this other guitar track, bring it up. And we are going to then say plus 28 on this for now. And then we're going to kill that, turn that on there, and then we're gonna get rid of this track. Okay, so now we have the band pretty much all going. Uh, these, everything below are vocals, so let's take a listen. Ah, now one thing that I should have turned off at the beginning of this is all the mastering stuff that's going on. So the whole thing's about to get a lot more quiet, you guys. All this mastering stuff is on. Um, I'm not gonna turn it off because, and hopefully have time to address what's going on in your mastering there. Um, it looks like you watched my mastering video, but um, you, you, you are missing a couple of good components in there. So we're, we'll come back to this, okay? So let's listen to it now, much quieter with the mastering off. Okay, I'm starting to feel like I should come up and turn on or turn up. Let's get to this track here. I'd like to hear a little I do want to come back and actually address this reverb here on the drum. So let's just turn the dry all the way up. Wish that wasn't on. I might reduce the room size a little bit so it's not quite as washy. Okay, so I turned up the kick, the snare, and brought the reverb down a little bit there, okay? So, now, here we go, into the vocals, all right? So, I think the band sounded pretty good. So, let's, yeah, let's try with our first vocal here. Um, nice voice, good lyrics. I like this song again. I had a dream to get out of the race and find a new regime all in all. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I would work on this tone a little bit. Let's turn everything off and just hear the dry signal. A better place. I'll turn this echo off. And I still chase those thoughts. Yeah, uh, I think you're doing more harm than good. Let's take a quick look at your EQs. Ooh, wow. Wow. Look at this EQ. Um, yeah, you are most definitely just sort of eliminating tone here a lot of good tone too uh like all this low end stuff is really useful i know you might be trying to go for like a more beetle-esque vibe here um but yeah i think there's a different way to accomplish this so let's just take a preset okay so let's start with um i like the classic vocal preset i use this one a lot and let's just take a run through i had a dream to get out of the race 
and find a new regime. All in all, a better place. And I still chase those thoughts, wondering how it would be to make my So I might, yeah, I, you know, I saw what you were trying to do there earlier, trying to get rid of a little of this 200 here. So I'm going to use this particular EQ and I'm just going to tighten it up on the Q if I can get it. There we go. About that wide should do it. Just so we get a little bit uh, less of that thud out of the low end of that voice. My way across and see now let's bring out a little bit more clarity from the high end. What the others see. I didn't know that. Ooh, you gotta make it for yourself. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna stay there with that and let's come down to the compressor. Check this. How's this doing here? And find a new regime. All in all, a better place. All right, I'm going to turn on my gain plug in here and I'm going to bump this up 3 dB. Okay, so hope you guys are enjoying this video. I know I'm working fast. I am 20 something minutes into this now, so let's keep moving. And I still chase those thoughts. There we go. We're getting a little more. Wondering how it would be to make my way across. My theory on using just this compression knob is just to basically get a little bit of it activating. Uh, I don't want it to be pegging. I don't want it to be solid blue at all points. I just want it to be doing what I personally want it to do, which is just shave off some of those high points, just so the track comes out nice and even, the vocal track, okay? So that's the first one. Now, below this, we have one, two, three, four, five vocal tracks. So right now, I'm just gonna um, come in and go uh, duplicate five tracks of that, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And let's turn the automation off so I can see everything. And let's just grab all these backup vocals and put them there, okay. So now we have the backup vocals. And uh, let's, um, Let's just, let's see, this is, I believe if I'm remembering everything, these are three identical vocals. So that one can go hard left, this one can go hard right, and this one will stay in the center. Again, these are all backup vocals uh, right here. These guys are the high vocals as far as I recall, and I'm gonna turn those out a little bit, and I'm going to also, because in the high vocals, I like to use a lot of reverb on high vocals, especially a song like this. Okay, so now we got everything panned hard left and right, except for this guy. Uh, we probably want to turn it down a touch, but let's just hear where we are. I didn't know that. Okay, yes. Okay, so we want to grab. I didn't know that. All right, so this vocal, these lead ones, or not lead vocals, but um, let's listen to backup vocals. Here we go. Okay, so I think this one's a little thick, and that's coming in right here, uh, which is around 335-ish hertz. Let's just tighten that up a little bit on the Q, and just so we're not getting quite as much of that. And we want a lot more high end out of this, especially backup vocals. They are the, you know, the icing on the cake when you get to a chorus. Ooh, you gotta make it for yourself. Okay, I like that. Let's go down to the next one. And let's solo that as well. Ooh, Same thing here. It's by of anyone else. Ooh. Okay, that's as much high end as I can get out of that. Um, these are just, you know, they're low. There's not a lot of signal. I mean, again, look at here. I mean, yeah, that's really, really low. So. Anyway, uh, let's take a listen. So those are the lead vocals. Oh wait, I have three of those to deal with. Let's go back and do that to the third vocal. Or maybe that's what I was just doing. Yes, this is the one. Little hit there, 330, what did I say? I think it was here. <laughs> you guys said you like watching me wa uh, work. 
Oh, down here. There it is. Okay, more high end. In spite of anyone else. Let's bring that in up a little bit. All right, so now let's go down to the high vocals that I was talking about needing a lot of reverb. Yeah, see, now you can hear those vocals when they pop out at that moment. Um, it's such a nice moment vocally. The backups are really nice. Might need a little bit more uh, reverb, though. Where do we have down here? Um, let's just turn this master reverb up a little bit. And maybe I'll turn up the master uh, echo as well on these guys. Yeah, okay, that sounds great now. Um, let's come into these high vocals and really make them bright. Gonna grab this 500. That's most likely the room that you're singing in. Yeah. I, I you know, I hope not, I'm, you know, I know what it's like to sing in these high ranges. Uh, <laughs> it's hard, it's hard to enunciate. So you guys be kind. Um, he sent in the song for us to all take a look at. So, you know, it might sound a little funny, but it's cool as far as like a song goes, you know, it's perfect. Let's go back a little bit. So this is a good example, like that 500, around 540 there, the 540 hertz that you see me removing right here with the yellow. This most likely, I'm gonna guess, is just like a uh, remnant of the room that you're singing in. Um, so we're just gonna try to get rid of that because it's doing, you know, it's interfering with what I want to hear. Okay, and let's make these a little bit more reverby. Um, let's turn it up from the plate this time. So we got a lot of reverb on this track now. I like a lot of reverb on high vocals, especially a song like this. So let's go back now and let's uh, turn these guys down a little bit. Okay, let's just take, take a listen to this chorus now. Hear those again. Oh wait, I'm missing something. Oh, there's a double vocal right here. Wait, that's the lead vocal. Okay. Right, that's the lead vocal singing a harmony. It is. All right, so let's say we need some automation on that section. This is the chorus, and I'm just gonna turn, because it's a little loud in the choruses. Let's zoom in, it's that long, ooh, right, okay. I'm gonna say this lead vocal needs an, an effect uh, because it's a little dry. Out of the race and find a new regime. All in all, oh, that's nice. A little slappy. And I still chase those thoughts. Yeah.
Okay, so we definitely need to turn the compression up on those high vocals for the moments that you get into the, there's a lyric at the end, and it just gets louder. Uh, we just want to control those. <laughs> Let's take a look. Sorry, I'm going to jump around for a second here. I want to take a listen to these electric guitars again. So one thing I'm going to do is make sure that these are not actually the same on the panning, like left and right panning. I'm going to make the right one go hard right, and the left one is sitting at negative 28. Let's actually change that. Let's put this back to 28. Let's pull this one hard left. Yeah. Yeah, these guitars are so low. I'm gonna bring this one up again. This is the right guitar. Yeah. Uh. The, these are dark, these little uh, electric guitar parts. Um, let's grab this guy, a little bit of that. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, and then we could probably turn that down a little bit now. Uh, yeah, it seems a little loud. And there is reverb on that, so. Uh, I think we, I think we're getting close to you guys. Okay, so uh, what do we have down here? Oh, we have another lead vocal. Oh, right. Remember how I said I had done this earlier? <laughs> I have a bunch of other vocals down here that also need to be addressed. And I think, yes, okay. So at this point, I have some tracks to delete, which is these guys. And I have a couple of other vocals to add in. So I was calling that lead vocal. So let's, uh, Duplicate that twice. We're gonna grab, um, get rid of this. That's a little intro drum section. And now here, I want these two vocals. And yeah, as I recall, these are lead vocals as well. So let's just take a listen quickly. I had a dream to get out of the rain and find a a better place and I still chase those thoughts okay so it looks like we got three identical vocals and they do not sound copy and pasted so let's uh, all congratulate him for doing that perfectly right yes nothing here Good job. You sang it three times. That's the way to do it. No copying and pasting. Love it. Okay. Um, so we have all our effects going and all the stuff. So it's these three vocals right here. We have are doing the same exact thing. I had a dream to get out of the rain and find a new regime. I'll all a better place. Let's hear what they're doing in the chorus. 
Okay, so here's what I want to talk about here. Okay, so first off, uh, we need to, let's say, just for style-wise, why don't we pan these guys out, uh, negative six and plus six. We'll have two in the center, or sorry, one in the center, and two uh, going a little bit left and right, just to give a little bit of a stereo spread across that vocal. could go well let's listen to it hard left and right Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay, so let's turn this automation off. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that the way it is, uh, hard left and right on those vocals, and I'm gonna leave this one dead center. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is turn down the side ones a little bit. So these are going down to negative three, just so you know, um, just so they act more like support instead of a lead vocal but it gives you that stereo spread sound, it gives you that nice big wide vocal sound. And maybe we should turn down uh, some of these effects. So why is there a tape? Oh right, that's the tape delay from here. So let's turn the delay off. Uh, actually, let's turn the echo off there on the center one, and we're going to turn the echo on on the side ones. Let's see what that sounds like. No, needs it. I'm just going to turn the plate reverb down a little bit on the sides, and maybe just a little bit less echo on the sides. A uh. little more bass, I think. Okay, so now, inevitably, like if you did watch my headroom video, um, now the band's all in. I now have headroom to turn up the drums into, so we have enough of them. I'm gonna put this, um, what do you call it? Tambourine hard left. Maybe hard right. That sounds good. So, uh, what else do we have down here? We have a piano in the chorus. That is really quiet. Let's check the velocities here. Ooh, these are low. Hmm. I wonder how you did this. Yeah, that is very low. Let's take a look at the plugins. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. All right. So let's just turn on uh, the gain plugin and turn this thing up. Uh, 
you know what I want to do? I actually want to get this back to a normal piano sound. I don't know what this is, but I want this to just be... I want all the normal presets for this. Yeah. Look at the EQ on this piano. Whoa. I've never understood the EQs that they uh, drop in <laughs> as a preset for these pianos. It's so dark. Okay, that's obviously too much, so we need to come back to the gain. Wait, we weren't using the gain, we we're using this, and we will turn that back down a few. Yeah. Okay, close that compressor down a little bit. Let's listen to this in the mix now. Now, I do miss those low notes in here, so all those low notes. I'm just going to grab the velocity. I'm going to turn that up a lot. I want to hear those. Yeah, don't forget about this velocity control, you guys. It does so much good when you're dealing with MIDI notes. I'm just going to turn that up on this end one here. And in general, I think we're pretty close. Okay, so I think we've reached a pretty good point in this mix and I am like over 40 minutes into this video. So we are going to listen now to his original mix uh, just so we can hear it against mine. And his was mastered. My mastering stuff is off right now, and I will quickly address that, but let's uh, listen. So this is his mix. Which is not bad at all, right? Here's mine. His mix. And I still chase those thoughts, wondering how it would be to make my way across and see what the other see. I didn't know that. Okay, listen to this difference in the chorus. These vocals could still be brighter. Ooh, you gotta make it for They're so dark. Ooh, in spite of anyone else. Now I am EQing more than I'm comfortable with, like more than I normally do, but because these signals are so low, um, I just gotta push harder. Yeah, uh, that's gotta be brighter. Uh, these all need to, oh boy, I've already pushed pretty hard here. Let's just do this. Let's do this really quickly. We're just going to push the high end up a little bit more, a lot more, um, in these backup vocals. And I'm just doing this relatively, uh, you know, sight unseen, pretty haphazard form of EQing what I'm doing right here. Uh, but I think that's good. Let's listen to that chorus again. I 
I think you can hear quite a difference there now between my mix and his. Um, I think mine's a little bit more warm, a little bit more rich in general. I can hear the bass in a more functioning way where it's actually supporting the low end of the mix. The vocals are brighter, bigger spread left and right. Uh, you know, some different choices on the effects and stuff. And in general, I'm just, you know, I think it sounds a little bit better. <laughs> Your mix was really good and I don't want to like make you feel bad or anything. Um, but yeah, hopefully something I've shown you in this video, everybody, you know, you get something out of. But uh, yeah, I, you know, don't do too much, you know, don't add so many plugins. I mean, that's something you should be seeing is how few plugins I'm really using, like four on here. Um, you use a lot of plugins and you can do a lot with less. So remember that. Okay, so really quickly, I want to look at your mastering. Um, yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on in here. And as I recall, I believe you had the MV limiter. I think you had these two EQs on. And I think you had this one, this one, this one. And I believe these three were turned off. So for some reason, you decided to turn off all compression. You don't always need compression in mastering, but it does help. Okay, so uh, let's take a quick look. Getting a little hot signal here, so let's bring this down. What? Hmm, okay, let's look at uh, mastering EQs. Let's just say, uh, sure, pop, let's listen to this one. Not bad, not bad at all. I don't like how much it's subtracting though. Let's try a uh, rock one. can live with that. Okay, so um, I could tell that what you were doing was using this more as a parametric EQ and then this one, well, it looks like you were using both as parametric EQs. I like, um, you know, I don't know. I tend to do a little bit more additional EQing in the mastering stage. If there's something I need to bring out, like 200 or something, of course I'm gonna bring that out. But since I brought it out preemptively in other tracks, I don't have like a big heavy 200 hertz thing going on here. So I, I think I'm actually gonna bring in a little bit of low end. Okay, so, okay, so, uh, you know, I'm running two EQs right now that aren't doing exactly the same thing like this one's defeating the other one right now so let's figure this out what is pulling oh uh, yeah what is that oh i know why okay let's turn this guy off okay so now let's come into your gain plugin Okay, so let's open a compressor here. Let's just do this, okay? We got a compressor going and a compressor by tools. Let's look for, um, where's the one I'm looking for? Platinum analog tape, let's do this since we're going sort of for a vintage vibe. turned out pretty nicely all by itself. I'm pretty happy. And let's look at this MV meter too. So 
So in theory, that's going to be the loudest part. So let's bring this up. So just so you all know, if you haven't watched my mastering videos, basically this uh, meter right here, which is free, it's the MV Meter 2. You can download this. Just look it up, uh, MV Meter 2. I have this, or he did, set it to RMS standard, which is what we're trying to read um, the average peaks throughout. So we're trying to get uh, a little bit, you know, negative 10 to negative 9.5 is typically where I like to master. So uh, let's uh, keep going, and we're just going to turn it up from the compressor again. Let's start there and hit this okay so that was obviously too much uh let's go down half db okay so we're hitting way too hard there now so let's come down and one db look at this again it helps if you zero that out first all right so i think that sounds pretty good right there i'm going to just for the ease of everything turn off everything else that i'm not using okay and this is so i can just shut them on and off quickly so we can play his master versus mine okay so now we're going to come here this is his master we will s undo these and solo this. Okay, now mine. His again. I think that's it, you guys. I think we've come to the end of this Clean My Mix. So again, huge thank you for sending in your song. I really, really appreciate that. I really liked your song. Great lyrics, great song. Uh, you know, the Beatles vibe thing is always gonna like touch my heart in a kind way. So great work on the songwriting. And really, in general, you know, the mix was good. When I listened to this, I was like, wow, this mix is actually pretty good. I listened to it a little bit more over some time and was like, yeah, it's a little, you know, devoid of low end. It just needed some warmth, in my opinion, uh, to sound a little bit more professional. So just remember, the less you EQ, uh, the better. Just try to get good sounds as you record them, which you did with your acoustic guitar and bass, especially uh, electric guitar, too. Um, just a little more clarity in general. That's what I helped bring out. A little bit of clarity, a little bit of warmth and just try to get the overall balance, which you did pretty well. Uh, I brought the balance up to where I think it needed to be. This was a quick mix in you know about an hour. Um, so, you know, this is a long video, you guys. Who's ever made it to this point in this video? <laughs> Thumbs up. That's pretty impressive. Anyway, you guys, I think that's it for the second episode of Clean My Mix. I really hope you got something out of it. Please leave your questions and comments in the comment section below and uh, I will answer those if I have an answer to them. Otherwise, also send in your songs for Clean My Mixes and hopefully you get chosen and get a, and I do send these back. You are gonna get this back. And uh, so you'll have this project to work with and just sort of see what I did with all the stock compressors and stuff like that and plugins I knew you had. Mm. All right, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. Hitting the subscription button really does help my channel. So if you feel like doing that, that's awesome. I got to get out of here. Have a great day. Peace and love.